Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Govijana Balaba Girivana Dadi Govijana Balaba Girivana Dadi Jatsura Nandana, Vajrajana Ranjana Jatsura Nandana, Vajrajana Ranjana Chamuni Siravana Tadi Chamoni Tiravana Tadi Tiravana Jaya Rado Marava Kunjabi Hari Kopichana Balava Divana Dadi Jasura Nandana Vajjana Ranjana Chamuna Tiravana Tadi Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Jaya Rado Marava Kunjabi Hadi Boom Jaya Rado Marava Kunjabi Hadi Jaya Rado Kunjabi Hadi Rado Kunjabi 
Jai Om Vishnupad Paramahanta Paribhaja Gacharya Sita Dishish Manis Divine Grace Abhai Charan Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada Ki Iskan BBT Founder Charya Jagaguru Srila Prabhupada Ki Ananta Kota Vaishya Brinda Ki Nam Charya Srila Hardas Thakur Ki Parem Shri Goho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shri Vasadi Goho Bhakti Brinda Ki Say Sri Radhakrishna Gogopina Shama Kunda Radhakrishna Giri Govardhan Ki Brinda Vandam Ki Matur Dham Ki Dorka Dhamma Ki, Navadi Dhamma Ki, Jagannapoi Dhamma Ki, Jamuna Maya Ki, Ganga Maya Ki, Tosi Maharani Ki, Bhakti Devi Ki, Sambhita Bhakti Vindi Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Sese Dara Gidi Dari Ki, Sri Krishna San Kirtana Jaga Ki, Gopre Manande, All Glories to the Sama Devotees, All Glories to the Sama Devotees, all glories to the Sama devotees. All glories to the divine letter see to see Sri Guru and Gauranga. Hey Dimitri Prabhu, can you open that other door also? Just, you know, foot wide or something like that. But people pay thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, to come to San Diego for these sea breezes. We get them a, as a byproduct of serving Sri Sri Radha Giridhari. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya All righty. Krishna Swadamo Bhagavate Damaganadi Bisaha Kalada Sada Shamesha Parano Kona Lodita Narayana Namaskritcham Naram Chayvam Narottama Devim Sarasatim Vyasam to Tojaya Mudirayat. We've got two clocks here. I'm wondering if that's they want to make sure that I end on time. <laughs> Subtle hint there, Prabhu's. So my understanding is that we're on 51920. And Dravida Prabhu, you want to be our sukha? Let me try. Yo sao bhagavati sava bhutat nyanat nye nirukte nilayane panamatmani vasudeve nanyanamitta bhakti yoga lakshano nana katinamitta vidya granti randana dware nayadahi maha purusha purusha prasangaha. Do we do the word for word or we go to the translation? What is the house standard? We can go to the translation. Okay. Um, Translation, after many, many births, when the results of one's pious activities mature, one gets an opportunity to associate with pure devotees. Then one is able to cut the knot of bondage to ignorance, which bound him because of varied fruitive activities. As a result of associating with devotees, one gradually renders service to Lord Vasudev, who is transcendental, free from attachment to the material world, beyond the mind and words, and independent of everything else. That bhakti yoga, devotional service to Lord Vasudev, is the real path of liberation. Also you say, after many, many births, when the result of one's pious activities mature, one gets an opportunity to associate with pure devotees. Then one is able to cut the knot of bondage to ignorance, which bound him, sorry, because of varied fruitive activities. As a result of associating with devotees, or, or devotees as you want to say it, uh, one gradually renders service to Lord Vasudev, who is transcendental, 
free from attachment to the material world, beyond the mind and words, and independent of everything else. That bhakti yoga, devotional service to Lord Vasudeva, is the real path of liberation. Purport. Brahman realization is the beginning of liberation. Ba did I say Brahman realization? That's what I meant to say. Brahman realization is the beginning of liberation. And Paramatma realization is still further advancement toward the realm of liberation. But one achieves real liberation when he understands his position as an eternal servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mukti Hitvanyata Rupam Sarupena Vyavastiti. In the material world, in the bodily concept of life, everyone is working in the wrong direction. I was in a room one time in Detroit, in Darshan, and a man kept saying, but we're making so much advancement. We're making so much advancement. Prabhupada said, your advancement is like the moth into the flames. <laughs> hey, you're, you're advancing, but what direction? Okay. Oh, there it is. In the material world, in the bodily concept of life, everyone is working in the wrong direction. When one becomes Brahma Bhutta, self -realized, spiritually realized, one understands that he's not the body and that working in the bodily concept of life is useless and misdirected. His, then his devotional service begins, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, 1854, Brahma Bhutta Prasanatma Nasojate Nakanchate Samasavesha Bhutte Shu Madbhaktim Labhyate Param one who is thus transcendentally situated realizes the Supreme Brahman and becomes fully joyful. He never laments or desires to have anything. He is equally disposed to every living entity. In that state, he attains pure devotional service unto me. Devotional service is actual liberation. When one is attracted by the beauty of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his mind is always engaged in the Lord, at the Lord's and Lord's feet, he is no longer interested in subjects that do not help him in self-realization. In other words, he loses all attraction for material activities. In the Taitariya Upanishad, it is said, you want to say Dravida? Yeah. Isha ye vanandayati, yada ye vaisha etasmin nadrishye, nat me nanirukte nilayane, bayam patishtam bindate, so bayam gato bhavati. Thank you. A living entity becomes established in spiritual blissful life when he fully understands that his happiness depends on spiritual realization, which is the basic principle of ananda bliss. And when he is eternally situated in service of the Lord, who has no other Lord above him. I have an editorial question I, I can ask you later on. Omagena tamarandasya gena gena salakaya jakshu shri militan gena tasmade shri gurave namaha. Hello again. So I was thinking that. Uh, because this is a 4th of July weekend, 4th of July being American Independence Day. Uh, Monday's the actual day, but they try to, any opportunity to let loose with the senses, they try to stretch out as long as possible. Um, so I thought I would, as we've been saying the last few, so I'm going to work that in, but as we've been saying the last few classes, um, the, one of the pictures of being, being painted here is of this gigantic cosmic karmic wheel of dharma that is propelled by our activities. And the whole thing is turning and we are strapped on it by pious and impious activities. That is the wheel of samsara that is just ticking. And we are strapped on it. Sometimes we're heads sideways, sometimes we're heads up, sometimes we're feet up, but we're just strapped onto that wheel that is turning since time immemorial. And people are trying to, well, let me say this. Um, the 
you know, what's the purpose of the whole thing? And they're thinking, what is it, you know, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, merrily, 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 life is but a dream. It's little ditty kids that used to, used to sing when I was in school. And the whole thing's turning. And that, they're just thinking, well, that's it. Like a teeter-totter. You know, they have a teeter-totter still. You know, sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. You know, you, you go up, you know, and the other person goes down. And so the whole thing, so that's just it. Just enjoy the ride. It was a good life. Up, down, sideways. You know? Is that what it's all about? So, also, the, the Del Mar Fair is going on. We used to do books there sometimes, but they used to throw us out a lot. We spent a lot of time <laughs> running and hiding and being arrested. So, I don't recommend it. But the, they have one of the largest Ferris wheels in the United States, maybe even in North America for that matter. And when you're, I've never been on it, but when you're on the top of the thing, you're supposed to have a beautiful view of all that whole area and over the ocean on a clear day, you can see to Catalina and people enjoy the ride. They go up and they go down, you know. Thing broke one time. And it sped up, and they couldn't stop it. And people are going around and around and around. And after a few times of seeing the beautiful view, you know, people just wanted off. People were throwing up. People were freaking, calling for their mother. It was a big thing. They had to finally get the. They had to jam the gears. They had to get a big fire truck up there with a huge ladder and lower people down on a bucket. It's the whole thing. So how long do you enjoy that ride? Everybody likes, well, not everybody, but many people like the thrill of a roller coaster. But can you imagine being stuck on that thing for days and weeks and months? Oh, what was the one thing you'd want? A pair of binoculars to improve the view? You said, oh, let me off this thing. So... We are strapped on this wheel, and everyone's trying to enjoy something. And we're, there's 8,400,000 different species. This, our existence is the original been there, done that. I've been there. I've done that. I've, I've, I've been a pauper, a poet, a king, a worm and stool. I've been around and around, and I've had enough but they have no idea of what the alternative is, and they have no idea how to get off. Um, the, because I was thinking about it, the word independence, and akin to it is the word freedom. They're like hand and glove, freedom, independence, independence, freedom. And they have quite a romantic tug on the heart that, oh, I'm, I'm independent, oh, I'm free. So it is, and Prabhupada describes it, the living entity wants to feel the unfettered freedom of the soul. So people want to feel free, but they don't, they're thinking that freedom means that my indulgence in the sense gratification is uninterrupted. That's freedom. I mean, it's a completely false concept for so many reasons. But that's the idea that they're thinking that freedom means if nothing gets in my way, if I can just drink unlimitedly. It's like a dog. Prabhupada says that, that sorry about that, folks out there. But the, Prabhupada gives the example of the dog on the beach. If the dog has a long, you see a dog on the, they have to keep him uh, leashed here no, on the, and they got a long leash, and the dog is like they're jumping and hopping, and they're running around and saying, I'm free, I'm free. <laughs> and then they've even got those ones that you push a button, and it reels in the leash, and it, oh, all of a sudden, Fido's like, ah! reeled in like a fish. You know? So what about that freedom? So, um, and that's what they're thinking. Oh, we're free. We're, you know, so I just for fun, I looked up, in the 
Oxford Dictionary, on, on a, what do you call it, uh, unabridged, that great pranic source of truth, the, as far as the meaning of words. So I looked up independent, just a few of these, and I think you'll catch a theme here. And think about us strapped on the wheel of samsara, stuffing our actions and reactions, and thinking we're free. There, I mean, just think about it. Thank God it's Friday. Because they're thinking, I can live unrestrained. No one's going to make me get up. No one's going to make me, you know. But for how long? Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday, they got a splitting headache and they're already in anxiety because they've got to get hauled off back to work than at the fender bender factory or the whatever they're doing. So three days on a three, hey, they really go nuts as we're experiencing anyone who was around last night and listening to the fireworks and they're just bottle rockets and all that stuff. For three days? And they're just giddy. Oh, I'm free, I'm free. But let's talk for a minute. Uh, independence, as it's actually described by those who know. At least mundane independence. So independence, here's the, I've just selected three of the many meanings. Free from outside control, not subject to another's authority. Well, how do you square that with the threefold miseries? How do you, you know, miseries be other living entities, miseries caused by material nature. You know Kalakanta, our Kalakanta, lateral Kalakanta? He had a brand new house. You know, you start off as a devotee, you don't, you know, you're not interested in all those things. He had a wife, he had a kid, he, you know. So he bought a house. You know this story? Got, yeah, he got a nice house. And he got a new car to go with it. Took him a number of years to build up the coins to do that. Florida, evidently, is riddled by limestone caverns. Yes, he confirmed by a Floridian. Sinkholes. Yeah, well, a huge sinkhole opened up overnight, swallowed his house and his new car. And I think it happened within three days. After the first day, he couldn't go back. He couldn't even go back and get his stuff, all of our stuff. Just ee, ee, ee. <laughs> Boomy Dave just ate it <laughs> like a little bonbon, you know, <laughs> down the hatch. <laughs> it was some time ago, but hey, once is enough. You know? <laughs> so, you know, misery is caused by material nature. Misery is caused by other living entities. Misery is caused by the mind and body. What? What? Independent, I mean, help me out here. Free from outside control, not subject to another's authority. Here's another one. Not supported by others. Prophet says, you know, you think you're sitting on the floor. I'm sitting in the hand of Krishna. We're saying, niti nitinam chaitanish chaitananam. We're completely supported. We can't even, how, can, how long can someone live without air? Somebody Googled it for one time. Free divers. Five minutes. I think they can go longer. I don't know. Kids don't try this at home, but I think they can go longer. Yeah, they build it up. They're free divers. And I think that, I mean, I think they can get up to maybe eight. Maybe, let's be generous. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Out of, I mean, it, someone can help me out here. We can just estimate. Sixty minutes. Twenty-four. Yahoo! I'm free. So, just figure it out. If there's 60, you said, huh? 24 minutes is a third of an, is, is half a minute? Let's say half a minute. He's saying 24 minutes. I don't want to waste time on it. Let, let, it, let us just say this, that I, in the grand scheme of things, to be able to hold your breath for Let's give them 24 minutes. I have my doubts about that. But, and, and are they brain dead afterwards? Um, so that's freedom? So we can't even live without air. I think you can go how long without water? Food, I think you can go even up to two weeks before you just keel over. But two weeks out of, you live 80 years, and there's 52 weeks in a year, right? So how many, do the math. It's, it's an insignificant, so anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on that. Where's the question of not supported by others? 
capable of acting and thinking for oneself. Coke is a real thing. Nike just do it. I mean, there's so many. The puff that refreshes. As I was saying to the Thursday, you can figure that some of the best and brightest graduated from Columbia University, which has one of the best marketing schools in the world. Columbia University, New York City. Get a degree in marketing. You've you got to get good grades to get in Columbia. It's not, so you, it, there's a, you've got some of the best and the brightest. And what are they doing? What are the best and brightest collected together in the marketing field? You know the blow dryer for drying hair? Yeah. That originally came out as a product for women. And bing, the light went on one day. Well, hang on a minute. We're missing 50% of the population. Let's market it for men. Men wouldn't buy it. It was for sissies. Well, what? It's for women. I'm not going to get the blow dry. You know what they did? Because for women, they were coming out pink and baby blue or whatever it is, you know, purple coming up. Women, men wouldn't touch it. They changed the handle so it felt like a power tool, like a power drill. And they came out in red and black, sold like hotcakes. So you got the best and the brightest out there. Just, they're just scheming all day long, 24 hours a day. Well, maybe when they're watching a ball game, they're not thinking about it. But most of the time, they're out there scheming how to squeeze money out of us. I mean, look at it. You go to the grocery store. They used to have the advert, they had items on the shelf, right? And you always pull everything on the shelf to the front. Nobody wants to buy that last can. Maybe there's something wrong with it. So they always move everything to the front. Even if there's only four things on the shelf, move it all to the front. So they're trying to squeeze you that way. When that doesn't work, they got advertisements. When that didn't work, they they've, they got advertisements on the floor now, because people have learned to tune it out. They tune out what's on the shelf. They tune out what's flashing on the thing. You got to look where you're going. <laughs> so boom, they got ad look. Check it out when you go to the grocery store. They got advertisements on the floor. I mean, they're just. I've mentioned before, I don't want to spend too much time, but, but markets, supermarkets are insidious. Do you know that 95, no, I don't know if it's 95, I think it's 85% of the people, when they walk into a grocery store, will turn left. And they always have all the fruit and produce on the left side of a chain supermarket. Because when you stroll into that, you, you were just trying to get to the back of the shelf to get some bread and some milk, the back of the store. They always put bread and milk at the back of the store. Because then you got to wander through the thing. And they just like, it's like a drug. Oh, oh, that looks nice. The fruits look nice. And why did I, well, that looks interesting. Why? And there's no natural light. There's natural light in front. they all got walls all the way around. Because if you have a natural light, what, do you, what happens? You experience the passage of time. So you go in there and it just swallows you. And they got advertisers here, this, that, so and then by the time you walk out, you got a hundred and fifty dollars worth of groceries and you went in for a thing of gallon of milk. What happened? So my point is, where's the question of freedom? We've got the best and brightest scheming at every minute how to take Buck to Saul, hang him upside down, and shake him by his feet and get his everything out of his pockets and his gold fillings. <laughs> We're not free. It's just it's a complete joke the idea that we're free okay all that we that was it so another definition of independence capable of acting and thinking for one's self you're not, not thinking for themselves i think how to fill my belly how to fill my tongue how to, wh what is a passion killing people will shoot their brother shoot their wife out of anger yeah, road rage. I mean, just, I don't want to dwell on it. You got the picture. Now, just for fun, we'll frost the cake with freedom. Freedom, this is the, from the Oxford. Uh, the power or right to act, speak, and think as one likes. Anyone like to drop dead? Anyone like disease? You know, you can't, there's no, we don't even know, you, we don't even know who we are. What is it? Uh, know thyself until thine own self be true, Socrates says. So before you can speak truth, speak your piece, you know, like a piece of something, like a, an element of something, you kind of know who you are. 
And you don't even know who you are, then, then who the hell's speaking? Well, your belly's speaking, your genitals are speaking. Was it uh, Vacho Vegum, Manasa Vegum, Crota Vegum? All these, Las Vegas, I love Las Vegas. You know, because the Vegas are the pushing factors. We're all being pushed by the senses. And in Las Vegas, there's prostitution, there's gambling, there's everything is, you know. So they really are surrendered to Las Vegas. It's got the right name, no question about it. Huh? Lost means the. Oh, I'm sorry. So the Vegas. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, thank you. Nice catch. Um, so we're almost done. The absence of dominance, the absence of subjugation. Oh, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. It's just drilling it down. The power of self-determination. If you don't even know yourself, how can I have self-determination? The state of not being subject to or affected by something undesirable. We have undesirable things pushed on us all the time. Bad smells, bad tastes, bad association, bad moods, bad breath. Bad breath. I mean, where do you want to start? We are subjected all kinds of, who wants it? We'd, if, if we could, we'd freeze time. Were you here when you had that crazy Bakta who said he had a watch that would freeze time, stop time? You don't remember? <laughs> because, if I, no, Vaikuntha was our Bakta leader for a number of times, and a good one too. So uh, they, yeah, he had a watch that would freeze time. I said, hey, that could come in handy. I said, show me. He said, nah, you won't know. It stops for you too. <laughs> Guy had a good answer. He had a good answer. So, uh, but nobody likes, you know, we're pushed by time. When it's described Sankha Yoga, the 24 different elements, I won't go through them all, but the 20, it's like a big stew of the material world. You know, the Mahabhuta, then the five working senses, five active senses, different states of consciousness, contaminated consciousness, which is false ego, the whole thing. They got all this stuff. And what is the 25th element? Time, which is stirring this witch's brew, you know, as it's bubbling and boiling and it's of the material nature, stirring the mixture of time. So what? We're not being subjected to things we don't like? Okay, so the point I'm trying to make, oh, the last one is the state of not being imprisoned or enslaved. Now, in that light of the accurate definition of freedom and seeing it through the eyes of Shastra, does anyone believe that 4th of July is Independence Day? Or Freedom Day? Don't that, what, what is the Republic Day? Is that what they call it in India? When it, Independence is it Independence Day too? Swaraj. Dream on, my friend. Okay, so the... Oh, what's the time? Oh, geez. Um, there's two definitions, generally speaking, there's the materialistic definition of freedom. And there's the Vedic definition of freedom. Now, we've already described that the material definition of freedom is that I'd, I have unrestricted sense gratification, which just by the nature of having a body, how many scoops of ice cream can you, you know, one, two, three, four, after the fifth scoop, man, that's it. A saturation point. Or just the physical limits of the body, you throw up. They used to have, what is it, um, in Romans? They used to have, they'd have these all night and all day, multi-day feasts. And they had a designated room where you went in and threw up. Because your stomach is just stuffed. So what do you do if you want to en enjoy more? Toss it all out. Toss your cookies and go back for more. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a whole barrel of laughs. But, I mean, the point is it's limited. I mean, it's just, so, okay. Well, one who's got a little bit of intelligence, that's not working. So there's Godasa, one who is a servant of the senses. Now, that's a big hint, Prabhus. What's the Vedic opposite of a Godas? Goswami. Hey, come on, work with me. Goswami means one who controls the senses. That's considered real freedom. So, well, I was going to save it for later, but we're running out of time. 
the, well, I guess I'll say this. Because the theme, it's talking about freedom. And then it's talking about the um, association of devotees. Because, and I was just thinking of a few examples. Um, Vishnu John Maharaj, I've mentioned it before, but Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur used to tell the same stories so many times that he numbered them. And sometimes he would say, just like number one, and everybody would laugh because they'd know. Or, oh, very nice to meet you, you're a number three. And his disciples would secretly know exactly this person was, you know, keeping the deity for stack, cracking nuts or whatever, you know, they would know the story. So, Vishnu John Swami, we're on Harinam, 1970, downtown Los Angeles, in front of Bullock's, which was the big department store. There were no malls in those days. People went to downtown, was the big shopping. Main Street. Now, that's where all the buses would park. So big diesel buses would park and pull out, park, you have four or five of them all lined up. And different, coming and going the whole time. We were chanting right there because it was the best spot. So the whole day, from 10 o'clock till we went home about 5 o'clock with a break for lunch, we were enveloped in diesel fuel, smoke, diesel fumes. And you had uh, the drunks that would stagger down from the Golden Arm, yeah, Golden Arm bar down the street. And, we, and you'd have the drunks, and then you'd have the prostitutes who hung out at the bar. They'd be, hey, hey, baby, trying to snuggle up to the brahmacharis. And then at the, at the top of Bullock's, there was an um, outdoor restaurant. There was a, you know, on the roof, there was a patio and this and that, a few trees. And uh, people would get big cups of styrofoam, cups of coffee, hot coffee, put a little snap-on lid on it, and throw it off. Six floors, it would come down and hit you, hot coffee. I mean, it would burn you. And if it, if it didn't burn you, it hit the sidewalk and splatter, and all of a sudden you have coffee, you know, your dhoti and everything, you know, and that was a regular function. So we had the diesel fumes, the prostitutes, the drunks, the cups of hot coffee. Then a Christian marching band, I could not make it up if I wanted to, lined up there, and they had trombones, they had trumpets, they had a boom, 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 big, what do you, what do you call that? Bass, Bass drum? Set up right next to us. I, to this day, I remember playing when the saints come marching in. <laughs> oh, when those saints come on, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. What else could happen? So Vishnu John Marsh is chanting out there. And it, and just picture the scene. And some nasty person went by and said, Hey, why don't you just go home? <laughs> Vishnu John put his hands up with that angelic face and that deep baritone. He said, I'm trying, man. I'm trying, you know? So the, and it was so inspirational. You, you, you realize that this man is in another world. My temple president, the first temple president, Laguna Beach temple president, Durlab, I can never repay him. I remember we were on, uh, well, the first thing, I used to read Bhagavatam to him, and we'd, he'd do the incense run. We used to sell incense. Krishna makes the best sense as a play on words. Um, and I, would, I was a kid, I was 17 years old, and I would read Bhagavatam. There was no seat, there was, there was a, a milk crate that they drilled holes in the floor and tied down. So I was sitting here, and Durlab was driving. And he'd run into these head shops, which were just dens of iniquity or whatever, you know. And so uh, he'd want some purification. So I'd read Bhagavatam, first canto. We went through the first canto, you know, one, two, three, those old versions, you know, so many times. It was fantastic. But here's the point. Um, and the driver's side door had fallen off and was tied on by rope. It's a true story. So Durlab was in and out, in and out, getting, you know, running in and out, different stops. So, and I would just wait in the car. He said, don't come in, wait here, you know. So, because uh, I was an innocent kid, you know. So, but the point is that we were on um, uh, Coast Highway, and he was just about to jump out of the van, and he threw open the door, and one of those big beer trucks, those long beer trucks, <laughs> snapped the door right off. What missed him by inches, it 
pulled the van right out and we were all, you know. He fell back. Pahi Pahi Mahayogin Deva Deva Jagat Pate. You know, when, when Uttara prays that please protect me in the womb, you know, Master. I was so impressed. I mean, I called for my mother, a sweet Jesus mother of God. You know, I don't know what came out of my mouth. But uh, and Durlap was just unfazed. I was so impressed. This works. Another time we were on Harinam, right, in, we're right near the Laguna Beach Temple on the Coast High. We used to be a head shop called, uh, it doesn't even matter. It, was, um, it doesn't matter. I forget the name of it. Um, it was big. It was a big, it was a supermarket of sinful things. Mystic Arts World. It was called Mystic Arts World. It's famous. Tim Leary in the back. You know, you can. So anyway, um, we're chanting right next to the Coast Highway. This station wagon goes by with a bunch of long-haired hippies in it. One of the guys does a double take at Durlob. The car slams on the brakes, backs right up to it. He's still in the street, blocking traffic. The guy jumps out, whack, hits Durlob, just knocks him down. The guy's jumping the car, eek, screech out. We didn't even have time to react. Durlob, we're looking at him, he's looking at us, he says, I got a lot of bad karma, Prabhu, a lot of bad karma. <laughs> Somebody he'd burn for something, you know, and the guy said, hey, wait a minute, I know that guy, you know. And he just, he was totally unfazed. And if you think about it, I mean, these are just, I, want, I just was thinking of a few small incidents like that. Hey, come on, my friend, work with me. What's this? Oh, come on. Oh, this is not really fair. There we go. Um, I guess I'll just end with this. The, we should be, by the association of devotees, we see another way to live. And by the association of devotees, we, what do devotees do? They immediately engage someone in devotional service. Here's Prashadam. Hey, why don't you help? Jayanand is the classic. Guru Kripa. Guru Kripa, who was a sannyasi and a GBC at one point in time. And frankly, he organized the collectors that built the Krishna Balaram temple. So you got to give the guy, what Prabhupada used to say, give the devil his credit. So um, he got out of, he saw an advertisement or an article in, in the San Francisco Chronicle about the devotees building this Rathiyatra cart. He saw these guys in pink skirts. They didn't know anything about monks in those days. They didn't know anything about anything. Now they respect, oh, you're a monk, okay. But, and he loved to fight, like Bonasura, you know, wanted to use his arms. He literally went to bed thinking, tomorrow morning, it was on the, you know, Frederick Street or whatever it was, they had a lot, they were building the cart. And he set out, he woke up that morning with the, full intent of going down and beating up devotees. That was his mission, you know? So he got in his car or took a bus. I don't know what he did. Somewhere he showed up. He's all ready. He's got us all limbered up, ready to get into a fist fight, <laughs> ready to go. Jayananda, and Jayananda was small, was tall. Jayananda was about six foot two. And he was a, in those days, he was strong. He was a strong guy, you know? I mean, he was sweet as could be, but he was solid, you know. Um, so <laughs> he's storming forward, and with a little shot your spirit, thinks, oh, yeah, this is a good guy to go after. You know, he wasn't going to go after the skinny little Brahmacharya. Right? He was going to go after Jayananda. Before he could do anything, Jayananda said, hey, you look strong. You got some good guns on you. Can you come over and help me? And he said it with such conviction, Guru Kripa did it. They were loading lumber off the truck. They were doing this and that. By that, the next thing they knew, it was lunch. He used to cook on those little Boy Scout candy, those little, you know, green stoves. Whoa. He used to make chili uh, with tons of tomatoes and, and paneer. I remember that. He had some mat matajis make some um, cornbread. And then he would make halava on that little can. I don't know how he did it. He would make halava and kitchi. For, and there was at least seven or eight of us, maybe even ten, you know, young men working hard. And he fed us all on those little candy stoves. And the ladies brought some, you know, whatever it was, you know. <laughs> Creeper told me the story one time. 
He said, next thing it was lunch. Devotees stuffed him. He never had any food like this. Then Jayananda said, okay, let's work off. The, you know, got them all back to work. He said, he, next thing he knew, it was 8 o'clock at night. He realized the devotees were the nicest people he'd ever met, and he'd never felt so happy in his life. He moved in, became a devotee. This is Guru Kripa, and his intent was to beat up the devotees. So you associate with the devotees, oh, wait, there's another way to live. Hey, hey, hang on a minute. One actually gets a little taste of freedom when the mind actually is calm and peaceful. So sometimes familiarity breeds cont uh, contempt. By association, I'm going to wrap up in a minute, but by association with the devotees, Every day, so we trying to find what is their peccadillo? Is that that's a word, isn't there? People's peculiarities or idiosyncrasies, or you know, there, you know, he never puts the toilet down. I never, you know, this guy, yeah, why he never? He it's his turn. He never dumped the trash, or you know, we tend to find fault. I got my personal peeve. Devotees who drink juice or water and then leave the cup all over, you know, or a half finished thing of plate of something, just leave it by, you know, back by all the, don't get me started. So, <laughs> you know, but by familiarity, people, you develop breed contempt, certainly in the material world. You don't, you know, value it. But the rarity of meeting a devotee and taking up devotional service, and it's in the Vishnu Parana. Picture the, all the oceans, the seven seas. Just do a little mental picture, mental exercise, seven seas. Who can even estimate a bodies of water on the ocean? Now, in that, all seven seas covering the earth, there's one sea turtle. And that sea turtle, the Vishnu Purana, this sea turtle, by its own, just by chance, surfaces. And where he surfaces, also in that all seven seas, there's one log, and in that one log, there's one knot hole. The odds of that sea turtle rising at random and going right through that knot hole in that log. That's the odds of meeting a devotee and taking to devotional service. And if we associate with the... Do you ever have a... <laughs> you know, somebody's got a little fault, so you go, oh, we've got this. Did you ever find that the devotees... I mean, sometimes they do, but they usually don't hold back on instruction. If you've got a big pride or a big ego, or you know, devotees will point it out to you. So, you know, by, there's a tur some stones, they polish. The first thing they do is put it in a barrel, and it turns and turns in the barrel, and it becomes smooth. You associate with devotees, humbly, and turning in the barrel of devotional service with devotees, all those rough edges get honed off. So I asked Prabhupada one time, how to make it short, um, I was talking about the difficulties. I asked Prabhupada, what does it mean to become a temple president, to be one of your temple presidents, fishing for some praise, thinking he'd say, oh, you're one of my generals on the front line. And No, no. Prabhupada stopped, put his cane down, sized me up, literally sized me up, and said, it means if anything goes wrong, it's your fault. <laughs> Which is very good instruction. It was actually accurate instruction, you know. And then I said, you know, but Prabhupada, sometimes it's really hard working with the devotees. And Prabhupada Chuck, I mean, Prabhupada lived, you know, with Carl and his girlfriend, you know, and their cat. I mean, Prabhupada knew what it was like, you know. So uh, Prabhupada, you know, chuckled to himself. He said, that's all right. He said, but you should always remember that you're blessed to serve the Vaishnavas. If you think like that, out of millions, I'm strapped on this giant cosmic wheel going round and around and around, being chewed up, ground up, and spit out. And somehow or other, the rarity of the seven seas and the one turtle and the one log and the one knot hole, I'm engaged in devotional service. And by that devotional service, so that is actual freedom, and we should all, because it's mentioned here, the potency of devotees, because by, by a devotee, one gets devotional service. By devotional service, one gets Christian. If A equals B and B equals C, A equals C. Right? Yeah. So there it is. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to say was, but devotees, I, really, this will be the last thing. Devotees are not interested in freedom. 
We want to be bound tight. What? What is this? What's the guy been droning on for 45 minutes? And now I'm reversing the whole thing and you say we're not interested in freedom? What does that mean? Anyone take a hazard a guess other than Dravida and Vijay and Balaram? What, what, what? We don't want to be free? We want, don't want liberation? We don't want independence? What do we want? Huh? Yeah, exactly so. We are the, the greatest. We want to be bound slaves to Krishna. So I'm going to end my time here. So we are done because we're already over time. It's your time. No, it's your time. I, I'm done. I've used up my time. So on this day, we, we had the uh, BTG for this, uh, the, actually the 200th anniversary is the bicentennial. Yes. And we, print, we printed in a lecture from Prabhupada and the title lecture was Declaring Our Dependence on God. And that's exactly what you described me. It was Prabhupada's theme, because Prabhupada came on the 4th of July, in, in the summer, Prabhupada would always take his summer tour across America. And it was the bicentennial, like you said. And Prabhupada spoke in that many, many places. And that's a fantastic lecture. Okay, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to freedom from Maya, and divine slavery to Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you, Prabhu. Because that's real freedom. Sweets. One last thing, Guru Kripa's Vyas Puja offering, one line. Sweet, sweet, can't be beat. What a taste, those two lotus feet. <laughs> I always thought that was a good one. A sutra that actually contains deep meaning. <laughs>